Hi, hello again. For this episode, let's focus on the types of testing the population mean and the steps for the hypothesis test. The types of parametric tests for the population mean are one sample t-test, two samples independent t-test, two paired samples t-test, key independent samples, key related or paired samples. The types of non-parametric tests for the population mean are binomial test, Mann-Whitney test, Wilcoxon, Crosco wallis and Friedman. The way that they are ordered is intentional to show you that one represents the other. Let's take a look. One sample t-test on parametric represents a binomial test on non-parametric. Two samples independent t-test represents a Mann-Whitney test on non-parametric. Two paired samples t-test represents a Wilcoxon signal rank. Key independent samples represents Kroskowalis. Not always, because ANOVA can also represent Kroskowalis and we will see this in the next episodes. And last but not least, key related or paired samples represent Friedman on non parametric tests. You will understand each of them during practical examples, and I will be able to show you why we are using certain tests. Now, going through the steps for the hypothesis test, the process to create the hypothesis test. Seems being very complex, but is not. We just need to be organized by following these important steps. Number one, formulate the hypothesis. This involves defining a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis usually represents the status quo of the hypothesis that there is no effect or no difference while the alternative hypothesis represents the opposite. Number two, specify level of significance. This is denoted by alpha and represents the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is actually true. Commonly used significance levels are 0.05 and 0.01. Number three, Choose a test statistics. The choice of test statistic depends on the type of data and the hypothesis being tested. Common test statistics include the z-score, t-score, chi-square, f statistics, and etc. Number four, criteria for rejection. Based on the chosen significance level and the distribution of the test statistics under the null hypothesis, determine the critical value beyond which the null hypothesis will be rejected. Number five, in this step, we like to have in mind that if the p-value is less than the level of significance, we reject the null hypothesis. And if it is greater, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Never say we accept the null hypothesis. It is a crime during that analysis process. Number six, conclusion. Based on the decision made in the previous step, draw the conclusions about the population parameter being tested. There is a lot of information for now, but I guarantee that during the practical examples, the steps will be simple and easy to understand. In the next episodes, I'll bring the first practical example of hypothesis test. Well then, see ya.